City. Do you have a financial game plan for your life? Hi, this is Lee Cruz, your local trusted New York Life agent here in Rapid City. My passion is helping you put the pieces in place for your family to make sure your game plan is a success. For over 175 years, New York Life has been helping people like yourself take action in securing their future. Don't wait, take action, and Google Lee Cruz New York Life or call 605-360-8804. We will work together on putting your family first. Building projects can be complex. The risks are great and time is money. Consolidated Construction of Rapid City simplifies the process by being your advocate, guiding you through funding, design, and construction. They manage the players and the schedule and marry the design to your budget so you get the most for your investment. They promise an energizing experience before, during, and after construction. It's not enough that you get a quality building. They pledge you'll experience quality every step of the way. Consolidated Construction. One call to build. In the past, if you needed auto body repair, you had to get multiple estimates and then try to get your car into a shop for repair. Well, not anymore. In most cases, you can stop by one shop, get your estimate, and schedule your car for a repair. The question now becomes which shop you choose. If you like quality, choose J&J Truck and Auto Body. They have ASE, PPG, and Gold iCar certifications that allow them to offer you a nationwide warranty. And they'll work with your insurance company so you're pleased with the outcome. J&J Truck and Auto Body, 1513 East Philadelphia. KIMM Rapid City and K294BT Rapid City. The Black Hills Sports Station, 106.7 FM and 1150 AM. Fox Sports Rapid City. NBA, it's the play-in tournament for the Eastern Conference. As the 7 and 8 seats, 76ers and Heat will battle in Philadelphia at 7 Eastern. Then a 9-10 matchup in Chicago between the Bulls and Hawks. Raptors center Jonte Porter banned for life for violating the NBA's rules on gambling today. Pelicans forward Zion Williamson has been ruled out of their play-in game Friday against Sacramento because of his hamstring strain. And if the Pelicans win... Zion still expected to miss about two weeks of action. Champions League, Bayern Munich topped Arsenal on aggregate 3-2, and Real Madrid needed PKs, but top Man City today to move on to the semifinals. Day baseball, Yankees have just pulled even with the Blue Jays, tied up at four apiece as they play in the ninth inning. Earlier today, the Braves beat the Astros 5-4-10. and 10. Atlanta sweeps that series. Mets keep rolling. They top the Pirates 9-1. Orioles doubled up the Twins 4-2. The Nationals won in L.A. against the Dodgers 2-0. I'm Dan. It's time for South Dakota's Sports Talk Show. This is the Nate Brown Show, featuring live callers, live interviews, and thought-provoking sports talk. From the biggest national names to the hottest local stories, welcome to the Nate Brown Show on Fox Sports Rapid City. Here's your host, Nate Brown. All right, welcome in on a Wednesday. The Nate Brown Show ready to go. Glad you're here. and I'm glad to be back live from our downtown studio. We're on 106.7 FM, 1150 AM in the Black Hills. On the radio side, you can also pull us up anywhere. Stream us live, foxsportsrapidcity.com. If you're watching on Twitter, we appreciate that. Checking in on Twitter, watch the show live at Nate Brown Show and follow us there and interact with us also on Twitter at Nate Brown Show and of course on YouTube the show is up and ready the Nate Brown Show on YouTube a lot of ways you can be a part of the action thanks for checking in with this busy show tonight some great guests across the state uh, we'll go national as well and local good stuff uh, here tonight South Dakota Sports Talk Show getting going on a Wednesday where it is always a great day in the Black Hills. You know that. We are brought to you in part by Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center. The expert team taking, taking care of the weekend warrior to the elite athlete. That's the team. If you suffer an injury, those are the experts. Bone, joint, muscle care in the Black Hills. Don't let an injury keep you out of the game. Stay active with the help of the experts at Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center getting you back up to speed. Start online at bhosc.com. Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center, specializing in what moves you. Okay, let's look at the Wednesday show, and then we'll get started. Uh, Brian No is coming up, Fox Sports Radio national host. I saw Brian No was active today. He went to the Braves uh, Astros game today. And he's coming on the Nate Brown Show tonight. Unreal. Brian No checking in is a big story out of the NBA 
and we'll get to that a reaction. Fox Sports Radio national host Brian No coming up, one of our favorites. It is a Wednesday, so why not we why don't we go out to Sioux Falls and East River meets West River? Our weekly segment with Craig Maddock live from Sioux Falls. SDPB, longtime South Dakota sports broadcaster, Craig Maddock on tonight. Down to Denver, Mile High Sports senior writer, Doug Ottawill is in. There's an interesting story out today when it comes to Deion Sanders and his approach and the whole thing. Doug Ottawill on tonight. He covers the Buffs, Mile High Sports senior editor. And we're going to stay local, talk to Rapid City Christian Athletic Director Kyle Courtney. Very big stuff coming out today when it comes to South Dakota high school sports. And so I want Kyle Courtney's perspective here in town. He's an AD, always enjoy my conversations with him. He's the boys basketball coach as well. So that's that's a plus on this. Uh, we'll talk to Kyle Courtney on some big news uh, from the South Dakota high school sports front. And that's on tap today. Wednesday show lined up and ready. If you want to be a part of the program, you know you can join us live, 720-1067. 720-1067. That's the studio line. Also, the Barron's Wilson text line open and ready. 720-1067. Direct text the show. 720-1067. That's the Barron's Wilson listener text line. Okay, we're all set and let's get going. All right, I've got to start with um, the board of directors meeting today in Pierre. So they had their annual meeting. This is the annual meeting for the South Dakota High School Activities Association Board of Directors. A lot of big things could come out of this. And so Matt Kearney on the case. I mean, he is he is there. I checked in. I'm, I'm watching the coverage here. I'm listening to the discussions. And there's some, there's some big news out of this today. And it's not just like, oh, that, they, they might do this. They, they might do that. Oh, they, they tabled this or, or whatever. So let me get to the two big headlines. This is from the board of directors meeting today. They had their annual meeting and then their regular meeting. Okay, so we're not going to get lost in the weeds. But let me just let me just pull out the two major things from the South Dakota High School Activities Association board meeting. And I think this matters in the big picture. Even if you maybe you don't have any kids in high school, maybe you're not a high school sports fan. This is a big thing when it comes to South Dakota, South Dakota high school sports, and where we're at in this new era of sports. I mean, it's just that it's a new chapter of sports. And here's the number one thing, I think, and then, and then I'll get to the second topic. They did approve the second reading of a high school name, image, and likeness policy. Okay? So if you listen to the show regularly i appreciate that number one but we talked about this on the first reading weeks ago so the board of directors talked hey should we have this policy when it comes to name image and likeness you know written down so there's actually rules in place so we can kind of guide people through this um instead of yeah we don't really have anything uh, uh, you could get in trouble if you did this or that yeah, and it's, it's too vague, so should we have some specifics here? And that's essentially what this has done, in my opinion. They approved the first reading weeks ago. Now it comes to the second reading today. This is high school name, image, and likeness policy, and it was approved today by the board. So what does that mean in the steps of the process? Now this is going to go to a vote of the school's athletic directors and how does that work well you're gonna you're gonna have an official vote on this it's gonna go to the schools the ad's are gonna say yes we're going to adopt high school name image likeness policy as written this constitutional amendment okay or they're gonna say no and then and then it's out essentially you're just gonna keep it the way it is which really isn't much and so then I believe you have a potential problem. I really think this. If you don't do anything with name, image, and likeness or have a specific set of guidelines, rules, here's the policy. Is there going to be a day or a time where a parent or a student athlete of some sort says, well, I, I think we should be able to do this, and I'm going to maybe challenge that or, or go down that road. And the thing is, they're trying to look at this and say, here's the policy. Are we going to have name, image, and likeness just run rampant in the state of South Dakota? You are not. 
So I'm not going to sit here on the program today saying, oh, name, image, and likeness. Here we go, South Dakota. Man, you're going to have kids making money and getting <laughs> – it's, it's just take it easy. We're not going to – Upset the apple cart. This isn't going to go crazy. We're not going to be recruiting kids from um, Sioux Falls Roosevelt over to Rapid City Stevens. I, I don't think we're going to do that. Are they going to recruit us now? Are they going to – is, is Pierre going to recruit from Rapid City? Uh, hang on, hang on. Okay, I'm not going to get into that. We're not going to get into that stuff. What had to happen, I think, I think it's okay for a policy to be in place so a student athlete – could have the chance to make a few bucks if there's an opportunity to do a promotion of some sort. And it's been very simple for me as I've, as I, my opinion of endorsing name, image, and likeness for high school kids. Why? I can work at the pizza ranch. I love the pizza ranch. So, so I can work at the pizza ranch if I'm a high school student athlete. But if I'm a student athlete, I cannot do any promotional work and get compensated for that if I have a great social media following or anything like that. And how is that, um, to me, reasonable? It's not. Let me, let me give you another one. So I can be a great player in the band. Maybe I'm a great um, musical uh, talent, and I'm over at Stevens, and I'm in the band, and I can play this instrument and that instrument, and I also am in a band on a weekend where I'm gonna play maybe downtown. There's a gig going on, I'm gonna be downtown, we're gonna play here in the summer. I can be a part of that band at Stevens, and then I can go make money playing at a weekend gig downtown Rapid City in this other band. But if I'm a student athlete, I can't do anything of the sort. I'm just a basketball player or whatever it is, and if I go and make any money, well, I'm going to promote this or I'm going to be a part of this and maybe do some social media stuff for this company or this local restaurant, then that was a no-no. These are the things that I think we're always uh, scared to change. We get nervous. I, people will say, oh, name, image, and likeness in college is a mess. I'm one of those guys. Name, image, and likeness in college has been a mess. There's no rules. They just surpassed everything. It turned into pay to play. I think South Dakota going down this road today, approving the second reading at the board meeting, it is telling the ADs, we're going to approve it. Here's the policy. It's pretty restrictive, by the way. I mean, I'm not going to go down line by line, but it's pretty restrictive. And it's not like you're going to have kids just going crazy. I'm the quarterback for the peer governors, and I do that. No, you can't do that. They're saying... No school involvement, none of that stuff. You can't wear your uniform. You, you can't do that on the school grounds. There's a lot of restrictions, but they are finally opening it up saying, well, if, if this student can do this, why can't a student athlete do this? I think the policy is good. I think it's smart to have one before you get in trouble with some other scenario and you don't have any guidelines. So I think the Activities Association is out in front of it more in front of it than some states. Now, here's what's, what it's going to take. The ADs are going to vote. This is going to happen before May 31st. They need 60% favorable. Have you gotten 60% favorable on anything? I mean, we can't even get people to agree on hosting SODAC 16 games. We, <laughs> when, when there's benefits and revenue to be made, we can't even agree on that one. They, they voted that down. So I'm going to tell you right now as I start the show, board of directors said yes, the school ADs to me, I think, are going to say no. That, that's, that's what I think. I just I reached out to a couple of ADs today. I didn't hear back from them. I, I'm serious about that. I texted them. I reached out to them. I didn't hear back from them. I heard back from uh, one, okay, and he's coming on tonight. <laughs> so he's willing to discuss it. I, I reached out to a couple more. They didn't even respond. You know why? Because I think they're nervous. I really do. I think they're nervous. Okay? So you're going to have to... I, I think the ADs are going to say, um, I, I don't want to get in this mess. Uh, I, I, I don't want to get in this mess. I don't think it's a big mess. I think it's smart. Pretty proactive. 
And I think it makes sense for if a band student can make money in a band on a weekend gig, why can't a student athlete promote the pizza ranch? I, I, I think that makes sense to me. Sometimes we get scared by, oh, this is gonna be bad. And then I think the ADs, 60% of them need to say yes. That's a big number. I don't know if they're gonna do it. Thanks for calling your live today and you go ahead. Hey, Nate. Um, thanks for taking my call. Hopefully someday we can go to um, just a majority of the vote on votes instead of that 60% rule. Um, <laughs> yeah, good one. But, it's tough to get 60 on anything. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, impossible. Um, but the other thing I was going to say is, like, well, and it's, I, I think it's good because just like what you're saying, like, you know, other kids can work, like all those things get paid for doing things that they are, you know. And it's like, uh, you know, I know there's, you know, there's private schools and high schools across the country that, you know, good athletes don't pay the same tuition that other kids do. And, you know, there's stuff that's been going on like that for a long time. So it's like, you know, let them, let them make some money. Maybe they, you know, maybe they, maybe they'll stay at some of their schools and keep, keep their programs going like that. And I think there's, I think it'll be good. Otherwise, you know, if they don't get something going, you know, kids might leave the state. You never know. I wonder, I, I don't think it's going to go crazy. That's my guess, you know. I don't think this is going to go crazy not, here. Not right off the bat, no. Right. Yeah. But I say, why can I work at a restaurant, but I can't promote that restaurant? That's really the kicker to me, and I, and I don't get that one. Um, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thanks for getting in. Yeah. I, I really do. Um, that That's simple to me. I've been in the uh, promotion marketing business a long time, so so I get that side of it. It's really key for businesses, okay? So if you have an owner of a local restaurant and they want to do a deal with a, a basketball player, a, a football player, a golfer, a whoever, then I think that's okay when it comes to name, image, and likeness. We're not going to break the bank here. We're not going to be talking thousands and thousands of dollars and recruiting a kid to come and play over here and do a name, image, and likeness deal at Rapid City Stevens. Oh, if you come to Stevens, we're going to give you this deal. That That's not going to happen. Maybe I'm naive. Wouldn't be the first time, but it's not going to happen. We need 60% of the schools, though. Okay, the schools are going to vote on this before May 31st. 60% of the schools need to endorse it. The board said yes today on high school name, image, and likeness here in this state. The school, um, I, I, my guess is I, I don't have a good feeling they will. I, I just don't. Thanks for calling your live today, and you go ahead. Well, shoot, 60%. In my day, you would have flunked. Today, that's a C. <laughs> that's a, that's um, yeah, a, they're yeah. not going to vote on this. And to the last caller, God bless you, son. But please name me one athlete in this state <clears throat> in the last five years that went D1. I'm not talking the North Central Conference. Lincoln Keenholz. I'll name one. Lincoln Keenholz. It was just last year. Okay. Um, yeah, he did play in the bowl game. I'll I make mean, you he's, that he's at name. Ohio State. $50 to your favorite charity and a uh, large McDonald's coffee for me. <laughs> that Klein Holtz won't even see the field this year. Well, I don't know if he's going to stay at Ohio State, but that's neither here nor there. I, I don't know. But, um, but still, so we can't count him. We can count Mike Miller. Yeah, we can count NCAA these guys. Champion. What about Simeon Burnbaum? NBA said, champion. Simeon Burnbaum, Oregon, D1. I mean, that, that's another guy. I mean, there's just okay. a few of these guys. That, that's fine. He's getting free Nike gear. He's not here. <laughs> All right. And and tell me the last time you ran into a runner that was a millionaire. <clears throat> well, here's the thing. Could, should Simeon Burnbaum be able to do a little name, image, and likeness deal if he was here at Stevens? I would be okay with that. I would have been okay with that if he'd endorsed a, a running uh, shoe company here or something. We got a couple of them in town. That's okay, isn't it? See, this is this generation. <laughs> you get a free TV. You get a free oh, TV. Oh, he's earning it. He's earning it. If I can work at a shoe company, why can't I you promote him? I'd be all in for this NIL if you could show me a 3.0 grade point out. Hey, there we go. Now we can. I, I agree with you on that. I'll, and I'll and I'm going to throw this that. out in eight because I think she's, I wouldn't pick her on my team. if I, I would take a four-foot girl over her 
but Reese from LSU. I've been reading a lot of articles. My brother's down in New Orleans. He he runs the VA for the state down there. Okay. You they take can't Reese? find any transcripts for Reese. Oh, okay. I don't know about that. They've been that. misplaced. She's in the WNBA. So, you know, <laughs> I know that. I'm just saying, you show me a 3.0, Nate. And Simeon, I would have gave him 100 bucks just because he could run and <laughs> got a 4.0. <laughs> Okay. All right, man. But I, you know, the, like Lincoln, just yeah. come along with me a little he, bit. He better take a he better take a hike because he ain't. They're all Air Nolan now, Air Royal, whatever. We'll, hey, we'll did see. you hear about Dylan Raiola? Uh, no, no. Uh, next time we talk to Gary Sharp, the rumors are going. He's a heading out. Oh boy, don't say that. Uh, don't say that. I, not... No, because I predicted it, Nate. All right. <laughs> Thanks for getting in. I appreciate yep, it. Yep. Um, here we go. On a Wednesday, um, let me throw this out there. Um, yeah, I mean, this isn't going to be I, – I just said it's not going to run rampant in South Dakota. Okay, we're not going to have every kid over here and over there getting this stuff. There's, there's a select few that could have the opportunity. And I just came up with a couple. Lincoln Keenholz and Pierre was like the guy. Okay, went to Ohio State, played. I mean, that, that's a big deal. I don't know where he's going to end up, but he's still at Ohio State last time I checked. Transfer portal opened uh, this week. Okay, Simeon Birnbaum, really good kid, unbelievable athlete. And if you don't know Simeon Birnbaum's story, I started highlighting him here on this show. You know, you don't talk a lot of track and cross country here on the show. It's just something that, that doesn't um, hit the mainstream. But I started highlighting this guy the last couple of years. I'm going, this this guy here in town at Stevens, he's like the number one runner in the nation. <laughs> and, and I go, if he was a football player, you everybody would be going crazy. So those types of people are going to get opportunities. Um, like uh, Nash Hutmaker. Nash Hutmaker out of Chamberlain. He, he was the man there. All-state champion wrestling, football, just unbelievable. Went to the Huskers, right? So, I mean, th- it's those types of players. Matthew Morris down in Yankton uh, a few years ago. He was Yankton. You think he would have done a little deal at the Yankton Dairy Queen? For Probably. I, I don't know. But it's just those opportunities. Why, why shut them down when I can play in a band on a weekend gig and make dollars and the student athlete can't? That's why I think it's okay. I don't think it's going to ruin anything about it. I don't think you're going to have a flood of uh, NIL deals. But I wonder if you you could have some across the state. Probably. And I do worry that the schools, when they vote on this in May, looks like it's going to be before May 31st, the schools have to give a 60% yes to it. My guess is they'll say no. I, I mean, so it might just be all much to do about nothing. That's my guess, okay? Um, Let's go to this. The other headline out of the board meeting today. We'll we'll come back to the NIL. So board meeting, uh, board approved it. Schools, member schools have to vote yes. 60% of them will stay on it. We'll we'll see when this is going to go down. We'll talk to some ADs. We'll kind of get the feel on it, okay? Again, I I reached out to a couple ADs, see if they wanted to discuss it today. I didn't hear back. I, I'll have one of them on today. I appreciate him. Kyle Courtney, Rapid City Christian AD here in town. Appreciate him coming up. I reached out to a couple. They didn't even respond. And that tells me they're like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. High school NIL? No, oh, please keep me out of it. Um, here's the other headline of the board meeting today. And it's it's uh, significant. We started discussing it yesterday with a guy who wrote the letter to try and get this process started. Well, now the process is started. So we had Eric Denning on yesterday. He's the AD at Mount Vernon, East River there, Mount Vernon. He wrote a letter to the board along with another school that said, can we start the process of sanctioning high school baseball? So high school baseball here in the state, just over 50 schools have played it. This is a pretty substantial number, over 50 schools. Um, There's a couple of different classes, and it's club baseball. It's clubs. So it's, it's Rapid City Stevens has a team. You know, Central has a team, Douglas has a team, but it's not the school. It's the club. It's similar to how softball was for years until getting sanctioned this past year. So now they say, can South Dakota sanction high school baseball? 
underneath the Activities Association. That was brought up at the board meeting, and the board said, we'll accept these letters, meaning let's look at what this is going to take. So this process is going down the road. And again, when you're going through an Activities Association and a and the whole thing, you're going to have a study, you're going to have feedback, you're going to go down this road. So sanctioning high school baseball is not going to happen now, next year. The process approved today was we get it, we got these letters, let's go down the road and see if we can do it. So South Dakota is one of two states that doesn't have sanctioned high school baseball. It's us and Wyoming. That's it. So every other state sanctions in their state association high school baseball and so everybody is pretty fired up about this because i was a little surprised by it and so i'm going to say what happened at the board meeting today the high or the uh, american legion the chair of the american legion dan wyatt he joined the meeting and he provided some pushback on this this is from the legion baseball side the the discussion of sanctioning high school baseball they were having it and he got in there and said high school baseball would tear down Legion baseball, quote, it could end it. That, that's the quote there from the American Legion chair here in the state. High school baseball will tear down Legion baseball, quote, it could end it. Um, and I think that's just too... Now, I'm not in the Legion baseball board there. I'm not the chair. I don't know the numbers, the participation. I think that's a little extreme. I think that's a little extreme. Because right now we have high school baseball club teams. I just told you over 50 are playing in the state. Over 50. Legion baseball teams still doing just fine, right? I mean, you got Stevens and Central and the teams here in town. Post 22's first games are starting this weekend, okay? Post 22 still fine. Post 320 starting up as well. They're, they're fine. So can you have these two th entities healthy at the same time? My thought is that you can. That doesn't mean that post 22 or post 320 are going to want their players to play high school baseball. I, I don't know. Um, the history tells us that that would not be the case. So I don't, I'm not telling you, well, if, if sanctioned high school baseball comes into play, then Stevens and Central are, they're gonna get the players at 22 and, and post 320. I'm not telling you that. What I'm telling you is, can high school baseball be sanctioned, legitimized, okay? That it brings it legitimacy, whether people wanna say it or not. Sanctioning an activity in high school, it brings it legitimacy. You're playing for a, a real state championship for your school. The school then provides some financial support for the sport. The governance is provided by the Activities Association. So it, it really legitimizes the sport in the state. I mean, it, it just does. Club sports are they, they just seen differently. Club baseball right now is seen differently than high school softball, which is sanctioned. I, I really believe that. Plus, South Dakota high school baseball, if it gets sanctioned, now you're seen as, well, you got a legit high school baseball program. The recruits are legit. There's a high school program. It gets us up to speed with the other states. Now, we're, we're the only ones left, us in Wyoming. <laughs> Whether people like that or not, I think both programs can exist. I don't think if you sanction high school baseball, it's going to end Legion. It's a, it could end it. That's what the Legion baseball chair said today at the meeting. It, it could end it. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. Now, can they both be healthy? I think so. You're going to have to figure out when do you play high school baseball? Is it going to go into June and stuff? Well, now the Legion programs might have a little problem. Okay, they might have a little problem. We'll discuss this more. Um, that's that's the lead out of the meeting today. Sanctioning high school baseball. The process is getting started. It's a long process. It's not um, just done today. The process, though, is moving forward. And uh, high school name, image, and likeness going to go to a vote of the schools. 60% need to say yes. Good stuff today on a Wednesday. Let's go to Brian No. I want to go to this national story, and then we'll, we'll come back to this. Hang on to the program. Craig Maddock is on from Sioux Falls. I'll get his read 
on all of this high school stuff. Brian Noe is in next, Fox Sports Radio national host. This is a massive national story. Next. This is South Dakota's Sports Talk Show, The Nate Brown Show, on FoxSportsRapidCity.com and live on 106.7 FM and 1150 AM, Fox Sports Rapid City. The wait is over. Ensemble entry doors exclusively from Renewal by Anderson have arrived with an incredible offer. Secure, timeless style, elegant features, customized countless ways with the legendary quality of Renewal by Anderson. Right now, you get 20% off every Ensemble entry door. No money down, no interest, and no payments for 12 months. No payments for a year. Please scan the QR code on your screen or visit rbarapidcity.com now to book your free estimate. Ensemble entry doors. The wait is over. We are number one, so you can always be their number one. Black Hill Surgical Hospital and Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center, the number one hospital in the nation for major orthopedic surgery. Rapid City forecast. Lows dip down to about 28 tonight under mainly cloudy skies, northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Daytime highs approaching 48 tomorrow. 27 tomorrow night. Temperatures a bit below average Friday and Saturday with highs in the mid 40s. Slight chance for snow becoming mixed precipitation Saturday. That's your forecast on the Black Hills Sports Station, Fox Sports Rapid City. Currently 40. If you're in the market for a vehicle right now, you probably have noticed it's sometimes hard to find the right one. That's where Summit Automotive Group steps in. Stacy and Matt and their staff working hard to get a great selection of pre-owned vehicles at affordable prices. At Summit Automotive, they have a different outlook on selling you a vehicle. You'll experience stress-free shopping, friendly, honest service with no high-pressure sales gimmicks. Before you buy, drop by East Highway 44, SummitAutoGRP.com. Hi, this is Dr. Dan Jensen at Physio. We want to be your trusted partner for physical therapy, athlete development, and sports rehab. As the official strength and conditioning partners for Stevens, Central, Douglas, and the Rapid City Rush, our team at Physio is building the best athletes in the Black Hills. If you have an athlete in the family, we offer long-term athlete development at affordable prices for middle and high school students. We also have the only board-certified sports PT in Rapid City. At our brand-new facility, Physio is ready to help you perform at your best. One-on-one physical therapy, athlete development, and sports rehab, all at one place. Get started at bhphysio.com. Collins Siding has been the region's premier window siding door and gutter installation specialist since 1974. They use only the highest quality materials and never compromise on their workmanship. Collins Siding is licensed, bonded, and their estimates always include labor, materials, and applicable permits and taxes. Collins Siding has been providing top quality service and exceeding high standards for over 45 years. And you can find out how by visiting them at 2016 Cherry Avenue. Collins Siding, 2016 Cherry Avenue, Rapid City. Hi, this is Dan Patrick. Remember to catch me weekday mornings from 7 until 10 a.m. right here on 106.7 FM and 1150 a.m. Fox Sports Rapid City. And now, back to Rapid City's sports talk show, The Nate Brown Show. Welcome back in, off and running on a Wednesday. On South Dakota Sports Talk Show Live, 1067 FM, 1150 AM. It's the Black Hill Sports Station, Fox Sports Rapid City. Glad you're here. Stream us all the time, foxsportsrapidcity.com. You get out of the radio range, you've got us there, foxsportsrapidcity.com. Craig Maddock coming up from Sioux Falls. East River meets West River, the weekly hitter with Craig. He's with South Dakota Public Broadcasting, longtime broadcaster coming up. A lot of South Dakota sports topics today uh, we will get into. Brian Noah's on tonight, national host, Fox Sports Radio. He's on Twitter, X at The No Show. Brian taking in some Major League Baseball today. Astros, Braves. It looked like it did it go extra innings? 
Nate, always good to be with you, buddy. Shout out to you in the Black Hills. And yes, it went 10 innings. The only bad thing, I couldn't live bet it. What's with Texas? Get your act together, Lone Star State. You can't bet in this state. What's up with that? <laughs> okay, that's a perfect lead-in. A perfect lead-in to this discussion that I want to have with you of this of this massive story. And it's dealing with sports betting. Um, so you love sports betting. I love sports betting. We talk about it. We, we do it, the, the whole thing. And now we got a problem. The NBA has banned a player for life for betting on sports, and it's Jonte Porter. This is Michael Porter Jr. He plays for the Nuggets. His brother, um, Porter plays for the Raptors, been on a two-way contract, kind of up and down. Jonte Porter has received a lifetime ban. He made bets on games that, well, I guess against his own team. He, he wasn't in them because he was out. This stuff doesn't look good. I'm looking into this, uh, Brian. Lifetime ban, what do you say about the decision from Adam Silver to start? Hey, man, I get it. It's, you, can't, you can't be betting against your own team, and especially you can't be uh, having conversations with sports bettors about your own availability in a game. You can't say, hey, man, you know, I'm going to say I have a, an eye injury. I've got an illness, you know. You know what to do, man. <laughs> like you, you can't have that. So I, I don't disagree with the lifetime ban. That takes just sports betting in general to a whole other level. The only problem is this is good for the NBA to have a no-name, really, as a sacrificial lamb that has a well-known brother in Michael Porter Jr. So you make an example out of Jonte and say, hey, don't be like this guy, or this is going to end up happening to you. The only problem is the next time it happens, if there is a next time, and it's a more prominent player, then what do you do? You saw this a little bit in baseball when Pete Rose got the lifetime ban, and then there's this situation with Otani, we didn't know how that was going to unfold. Was Otani betting on baseball at all? What do you do if that's the case? So that's what it makes me think of. It makes a lot of sense for the here and now, but give it 5, 10, 15 years. If there's another player that's more well-known and all of a sudden you've set this precedent, then what do you do? Okay, I'm going to ask this because I've asked a couple of guys this. I'm going to ask you this. Do we have a problem with scenarios like this nfl players have been popped not to this extent but betting on other stuff and and you're not supposed to do that betting at the facility and that stuff calvin ridley was like the first one a couple of years ago now mlb you had the college baseball scandal with alabama's coach now nba is this a problem that will persist it will but look at how everything is played out nobody benefited like What's the story where, hey, Calvin Ridley, he was betting when he was away from the team, and he struck freaking gold. You know what I mean? What, what's the story with Jonte where it's like, yeah, he earned about $21,000, which is a drop in the bucket compared to an NBA contract that he might have earned. You know, think about – Back in the day, Rajah Bell with the Suns and some other teams, the Sixers, where he was on a 10-day contract and made it. I think Austin Reeves with the Lakers, he was the same sort of guy where some of these two-way contract guys, these 10-day contract guys, they actually make it and they play for years and they earn millions. This guy screwed up the possibility of earning millions to earn $21,000 through sports betting. It's a joke. So that's the thing. This is going to continue. You're going to get more stories like this. But just like Jonte, where the sports better he let know, where it's like, hey man, uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna pull a fast one here. Just, just bet the unders on my player props. And the guy did it. He laid eighty thousand dollars. He would have won one point one million dollars. But because the bets were so irregular and it raised red flags, the bets were frozen. They didn't even get paid. <laughs> so it's like if you aren't striking gold, I think that you're going to see more athletes say it's just not worth it. And the ones that have been getting popped, they didn't benefit anyway. Brian no on tonight, national host, Fox Sports Radio. You hear him on the Nate Brown Show on Fox Sports Rapid City. Try and get him on a regular basis. And... Are you buying into the fact that the regulated space on this, now that it is legal in, in all of these states, 
there's all this regulation, there's all this oversight. Are you buying into that's actually better than how it was before, or is it, well, it's just so prevalent now, that's why we're hearing this stuff? I think it's better because there are more regulations. There are more eyeballs looking at anything that's improper. The only thing is, because it's being policed more, it seems like it's a bigger problem. It really isn't. It'd be like if you're on the highway and the speed limit has been 70 the whole time, right? Let's use a loose comparison. But all of a sudden, you've got more cops out there or you've got better radar guns. And all of a sudden, <laughs> drivers are getting pulled over left and right a lot more often. Or you see it on the news. You hear about it more. That's really what's happening with sports betting is that it's being watched more closely to see if anything improper is going on. So you're hearing about it more, and it turns into this, I think, misperception that, oh, my gosh, it's gone freaking crazy. We are off the rails now. It's like, no, we've had betting scandals before. We've had point shaving. We've had a, a referee in the NBA essentially point shaving and betting on games. He was refing. So we've had these problems before. It hasn't just started. It's just that there are more radar guns now. This stuff is being detected and prevented, by the way, from you for cashing in. So I just think you're hearing about it more. But I think the more eyeballs, the better, because these guys aren't benefiting. And at some point, the wise people are going to say, it's just not worth it because you don't end up ahead in the long run. I'm with you on it, Brian, because my argument is, what would have stopped Jonte Porter from doing this in prior years underneath the table? Everybody had, knows bookies, and there's some big money that can be bet. That's how Otani's interpreter even bet huge amounts of money through an illegal bookie. So he could have made $21,000, and we would, wouldn't have known about it. What would have stopped him? No, you're absolutely right, Nate. It's In another era, you absolutely could have done that, and we wouldn't have known. So just because we know now, and he got punished for it, we're worse off. <laughs> it's just, it, it creates a different perception of the so-called problem. It's just being reported when, to your point, Nate, you just wouldn't have known about it before. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm believing that. Uh, Brian, no on tonight. Let's go to a college story. I just want you to read on this. So the NCAA Division One Council had a meeting today, and they said we're going to have schools get directly involved with name, image, and likeness. That, that's been a oh, no-no before. We had to have these outside collectives in these groups. They're, they're the ones that need to do it. The school, you, you can't be involved in that. They say today schools can directly help athletes negotiate NIL. Do you like that? I mean, that's <laughs> like the NCAA and college sports, they've basically been so slow to regulate what has happened the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, you just had to. In a couple, an era ago, players were getting paid. You just had to do it under the table, and we acted like, oh, these are amateurs. Nobody's making any money. Now there's NIL, so it's like, oh, the collective. You've got to do like Bob's car wash, and that can pay the the star quarterback. Now it's the university. This is the way it's always been, Nate. It's just they are slowly saying, you know what? screw it this is what's going on let's not have these <laughs> like this dumb shell game over here so i think they're just slowly adapting to what's basically been happening for far longer than the here and now they're just super slow to change anything it's like the system has changed the rules right like the, the system has been ahead of the rules all the time and they're just slowly adapting to it Yep, they're going to say, schools, you can do this now. Um, and the schools are going, oh, great. I mean, we were yeah. kind of doing it through, you know, this guy before. But um, it, it that works. Brian Noan tonight from the ballpark. Houston went to the Braves. Houston, what would you think of the ballpark, uh, Astros? It was very nice, Nate. I've been to almost every NFL stadium. I've been to, I don't know, at least over 10 MLB stadiums. I love uh, the New York Mets Stadium. City Field is beautiful. I'm a Cardinals fan, so I love Bush uh, Stadium. But, man, I'll tell you what, Minute Maid Park was really nice, Nate. Was it nice closed, trip. open? What? 
It was closed today. Close. Yeah, we had the retractable roof, little air conditioning, but big windows in the outfield, kind of like Jerry World over there with the Cowboys. So it doesn't really feel like you're inside, though. Braves beat the Astros, and Brian No was live, and he joins us on the Nate Brown Show tonight. Brian, enjoy your time, man. Thanks for hopping on. Yeah, for sure, Nate. I can't wait to get back to a legal sports betting state so I can start <laughs> firing away, you know? I like it. Uh, Brian No on tonight. You can hear him uh, on Fox Sports Radio. Great national host. Needs to be on the air more. I mean, he, he does. I know he works a lot. Need to put him on the air more. National host here on Fox Sports Radio, Brian No. He hosts Countdown to Kickoff all NFL season on Sundays. Um, so that's the story. NBA investigation finds out. Jonte Porter, Toronto Raptors. Okay, not not a star, but but a player, um, and and he played. He was um, disclosing confidential information about his status to sports betters. So, for example, a person connected to Porter in this investigation placed an eighty thousand dollar bet that Porter would underperform. Yes, he wouldn't get as many points rebounds, that thing. He placed an $80,000 bet. It would have paid over a million dollars. And so this guy connected to Jonte Porter's like, hey, he's going to underperform. The bet was not paid out. It was flagged. This is the type of stuff they're flagging. They're seeing, they're going, hey, why did this guy place a very big bet on Jonte Porter who comes off the bench for the Raptors to not get five rebounds and to score less than six points? (laughs) <laughs> They're like, interesting. That's a big bet for a, um, a really weird scenario. So Raptors, Jonte Porter. That's the brother of Michael Porter Jr., nice player for the Nuggets. Now, now that's a pretty big-time player. That's his brother. Jonte Porter's got a lifetime ban today from the NBA. That's it. He's done. Lifetime ban. It's a biggie. Coming right back with Craig Maddock. SDPB live from Sioux Falls. A lot of South Dakota sports topics to hit. We'll get Craig's take on the way. From high school to college to the pros, this is the Nate Brown Show on 106.7 FM and 1150 AM Fox Sports Rapid City. Hi, I'm Tim Wrench and I'm seeking personal injury cases. If you've been injured because someone else did something wrong, call me up. I'm a trial lawyer. I've tried criminal and civil cases for decades, and I can use all of that experience to help you. I also know this, that when insurance companies know that you're represented by a trial lawyer, they take your claim more seriously, and if it is to be settled, it's settled better with a trial lawyer. Wrench Law, 605-341-1111, wrenchlaw.com. Now through April 30th at Pumps Tire Service, get up to $100 instant savings. Save $70 when you purchase four eligible Bridgestone tires or $60 when you purchase four eligible Firestone tires. Plus, get $30 off when your purchase is made on your Pumps Tire Service credit card. Wait, there's more. Purchase four eligible tires and save an additional $40 off installation. Hurry, offers end April 30th. Pumps, we know tires and service. You should know Pumps. Subject to credit approval. See store for complete details or visit PumpsTire.com. Attention, please. The new loaded cheesy ranch sticks at Pizza Ranch are loaded with flavor. Skillet crust, melty cheese, herbs, spices, and now up to two of your favorite toppings like pepperoni, sausage, jalapenos, and bacon. You've really got to get a load of these. Like, literally, get a whole load of them. Pizza Ranch, everyone's favorite buffet. Stop into your local Pizza Ranch with two Rapid City locations. Their buffet open daily, 11 to 8, and order online at pizzaranch.com. Ever wish you had a take back? Highmark Credit Union is pleased to offer innovative loans with take back. Most banks and credit unions make you choose between paying ahead on a loan or saving for emergencies. We do things differently. At Highmark, you can have both. Access the cash you paid above your monthly minimum whenever you need it. Make the smart money move. Highmark Credit Union. Highmark. FCU.com. 
building a new home in the Black Hills? At Builders First Source, we turn dreams into reality. Experience our skilled drafting services and use our 3D visualization tools to preview your home before construction begins. Discover inspiration in our showroom, meet our cabinetry design experts, and explore a wide selection of top quality materials. Visit us in Rapid City, Spearfish, or Hot Springs, or start online at bldr.com. Builders First Source, your partners in success from foundation to the finishing touches. Insurance. We all need it to protect our homes, health, businesses, and belongings. But having adequate coverage is just the beginning. You also need the support of professionals who stand by your side to protect what's important to you. Fisher Rounds & Associates combines the coverage you want with the commitment you need. Fisher Rounds & Associates. At your service, at your side. With offices in Pier, Mitchell, Watertown, Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. Hi, it's Colin Coward. Great to be in the Black Hills. Getting heard weekdays, 10 to 1 on 106.7 FM and 1150 AM. Fox Sports. Hey, welcome back in. The Nate Brown Show live weekdays 4 to 6 on Fox Sports Rapid City. A lot of ways you can listen on the radio side, 106.7 FM, 1150 AM in the Black Hills. Also, FoxSportsRapidCity.com. Live stream us on your phone anywhere. And then you can watch the show live on Twitter, at Nate Brown Show. Follow us on Twitter, X, at Nate Brown Show, and watch us. The Nate Brown Show brought to you in part by Spearfish Motors. That's the home for the new 2024 GMC Sierra pickups right now. Great financing options available right now. The new 2024 GMC Sierra is at Spearfish GMC Cadillac. Full line of new 2024s from the locally owned new car and truck dealership. See Roger and the crew at Spearfish Motors. Start online, spearfishmotors.com. Craig Maddock, he's back in. East River meets West River, our weekly hitter. He's with SDPB, Sioux Falls. Craig, good to have you on. Big day today. The board of directors had their annual meeting and their regular meeting. They're going to extend it even into tomorrow. That's how you know Matt Kearney and the crew was busy today uh, following everything happening. Craig, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. And uh, thanks, Matt, for being all over it as he, uh, he normally is. Yes, he was all over it. He was on the case today. So two big headlines out of it, and I'm going to see what you think of it. Um, one is high school name, image, and likeness, second reading of the policy was approved. So what this means for people are like, okay, well, what's this mean? Second reading was approved. Now it does go to the schools. The member schools are going to get a vote on this before May 31st. Will they approve the high school name, image, and likeness policy? And there has to get 60% to say yes. That's pretty tough. Pretty tough to get 60%. I don't think it's going to pass right out, right out of the bat because I still think there are a number of school districts that either, one, um, don't think it's going to be a major issue for them at all, um, or they're just not sure and will vote no. Typically, if you're totally not sure how it could affect your school district, you're going to vote no on it. Uh, I'm I'm going to go with it will not pass the first time around. Okay, I'm in agreement with you on that. I, I'm a supporter of this because I, I really relate it to a couple of different things. I've, I've told you, if I'm in a band at Stevens and I'm a musician, I can be in the, the concerts and the whole thing, and then I can go play a weekend gig downtown Rapid City and I can get paid. Um, but I'm a student athlete and, and I can't promote the pizza ranch. And so I, I just don't I don't get that stuff. So I'm in agreement with you. I think the eight or the schools are going to say, uh, I I don't think so. Is it because they're scared of? Well, look at what it's done to college sports. How much do you think that factors in, honestly? Uh, maybe not much right now because I, I think it's really having a negative effect on the college, and it's it's just getting crazy. Coaches are complaining about it. Uh, coaches are leaving the profession because of that and um, getting into the portal. It's just getting to be way too much on the college end. You know, I'm thinking about the kid in Kadoka who, uh, you know, is he going to get a free pizza every every time he talks about, 
you know, the the pizza joint they have there in downtown Kadoka. Yeah, I mean, yeah. How much is it going to affect, like, the smaller towns? And let's face it, we get a lot of small towns in South Dakota. I just don't know if it's going to play in effect, uh, be in effect uh, for the smaller town. So um, it'll be interesting. It wouldn't surprise me the bigger schools might say yes, but I, you know, all the the Class B, the Class A schools, you got to wonder if it really is going to play a major part in in what NIL is all about. Okay, so second reading of high school name, image, and likeness policy was approved. By the way, do you think it's smart for the Activities Association to to put a policy in place really it's it, it's been so vague there there's no information they were trying to get out in front of this i thought that was a good play like hey you can't use your school uniform you can't say you're the quarterback at pier you can't do, do here here's the rules do you think that was the right way to go i think so i mean they're trying to stay ahead of an issue that is so brand new and hot and everything else so so I, I give them a big thumbs up for for being there um, looking at an issue that certainly is affecting a number of states across the country okay i reached out to two big school ad's okay because i said hey i just want to see what you think of this can you come on the show i didn't hear back at all <laughs> they maybe they don't like me craig or maybe they don't like this issue well, you and I have both been in that situation before, and, and who knows if they're just just busy. But I, I think part of the issue is um, it's so new that a lot of ads don't know how it is really how it would really affect uh, the teams or these kids in their schools. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and and I really think the small schools uh, it's it's not going to affect them at all. So they may not even vote on it. Uh, Craig Maddock on tonight, SDPB, Sioux Falls, East River meets West River. So the schools are going to vote on this. 60% need to say yes. I'm in agreement with Craig. I don't think they're going to hit that number, but we shall see. Okay, other headline out of the board meeting today. High school baseball sanctioning. I've talked with you about this, Craig. It's your favorite topic. Um, okay, <laughs> I've, I've asked you about this over the years. Oh, and now, yeah. Now this is actually, um, process has started, so it's not just discussion anymore. The board said, okay, we hear the letters. Let's have the staff put a study together and see if we should sanction high school baseball. There's a lot of discussion today as we saw this come out of the meeting. Sanctioning high school baseball, do you think you could have a healthy sanctioning uh, baseball and Legion baseball together? Only if they can work together, and I'm not so sure they can. Um, I, you know, I just found out that you know when I heard there were two schools that wanted the, the activities association to take a look at baseball. I thought, oh man, it's a couple of the larger schools that uh, would want to take a look at it. But no, it's not. It's nobody from Rapid, nobody from Sioux Falls. Nobody from Aberdeen or Watertown or Pier. I mean, it's two smaller schools that are looking at, they would like to see baseball, high school baseball sanction. Uh, and, and I've heard, too, I've seen some stuff on social media that there's been some Legion programs that are complaining about it. And the only way it's going to get sanctioned, if you, if you get about 20 schools that are going to go for it, and if Legion baseball it gives its blessing to it as well okay interesting i made this point i understand the post 22 thing here the post 320 thing they start their seasons early we got baseball this week so so high school baseball if this was sanctioned it would be going on right now at the same time so so i don't know how that works however there are a ton of states that have high school baseball sanctioned they play like april may wrap up early june and they have summer Legion baseball, and it seems to be successful. Nebraska's perfect example. They have high school, they have Legion, and it seems to work. Can it not work? Uh, this may surprise you, uh, Mr. Brown, but I played high school baseball in Minnesota, and when school got let out for the summer, we then transitioned, and I played Legion baseball okay. uh, in Minnesota. So, yes, it can work. But I can see, you know, the long-time programs of Legion Baseball. They're starting, they're starting baseball already. School's not out yet. 
um, it would be a hindrance to them if uh, there was high school baseball. I don't think they would like it. it would and be I a think hindrance. there's going to be some pushback to it. I, I can see 320 and post 22 completely against uh, high school baseball. Uh, South Dakota American Legion chair said at the meeting today um, high school baseball will tear down Legion. And they, and they said it could end it. I, I think that's a little. A little extreme, no? Yeah, I would think I would think so too. I mean, I mean, I uh, several states. I mean, Legion or uh, whatever uh, non high school baseball. It's in the summer. It's in the summer. To, uh, a number of states, and let's face it, high school ball. Depending on the weather, uh, I mean, you're you're only going to get about maybe five weeks. You know, maybe six weeks of high school baseball. But then, come summer, uh, once school is out mid mid May, you could then switch into uh, Legion baseball. But there's a lot there's a lot to be approved on this before it gets close. And I think we're a long ways away yet. Okay, no, I'm with you. The the process has started. The board said, okay, you can go down that road. Let's take a look. What do you think is the final result? That's my question. Final result: sanctioning high school baseball. Will they get it done? Uh, only if Legion Baseball will allow it. Only? Wow. So, yeah. and they said they're going to bring the Legion in. Uh, Dan Sorzo said you're going to be a part of this discussion. So so if they say no, you say it's out. I, uh, yes. Mm. Craig Maddock tonight, uh, last one for the SDPB broadcaster from Sioux Falls. Can you explain why we're not going to have the Sodak 16 basketball volleyball games uh, to go to state for Class A and Class B? Why can we not have those at the highest seed? The the ADs voted on this, and they voted it down. I was texting with some ADs around here, Class A, Class B. They were for it, and, mm-hmm. and they said, I can't believe this got voted down. But there was a bunch of people that said, no, we want the neutral site still. Why? And they want it fair. They want, they want it more fair for both sides, more which fair. <laughs> I think is uh, – uh, I'm not going to say it's dumb, but I'm not in favor of it. I, I think it takes away from the regular season. If you're, yes. if you're the higher seed, you should be able to host a playoff game. And I, I think the attitude, though, in Class A and Class B is, hey, that makes it more fair for everybody. So now it's, it's more fair and equal <laughs> to uh, be at a, a different site so that it, it's fair for the, the lower seed. Uh, I think you're right. I think you're right. There's a bunch. I, I mean, so. um, I think so. We had Hot Springs and Vermilion in boys basketball play in Kadoka. There was 300 fans there. There was 300 well, fans there. I can I can understand if you've got two teams, you know, on the extreme corners of the state, and they're going to be playing on a Tuesday night or a Thursday night. I mean, I could see maybe you you take that and you go halfway, so it benefits both programs. But that's a, a distance thing. But other than that, I'm I'm in favor of what the double A's do, and that's uh, you play at the higher seat. That's it. I, I'm with you. I want consistency. We wouldn't play a football game between St. Thomas More and, and Winter in Pier. I mean, we just wouldn't do that. Okay, Craig Maddock tonight, SDPB. The new podcast is out, Craig? Yes, yes, it is. came out today. And go back to the 50s, the 1950s. He was one of the, if you're going to put names of all-time multi-state, multi-sport athletes, you got to put John Simcoe's name on there. First one to have four state tennis titles, four doubles titles. It was He was drafted in the NFL. He played at Augie. And quite the story about playing at Augie his senior year and signing a contract for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the ramifications he had with it. He still thinks about it today. He should have never done it. You can hear more on that podcast. But a great guy. And, of course, he became a U.S. magistrate judge, one of the few guys that I have ever I did not run into, which <laughs> was good news. I like that. Uh, in you know Play. I mean. In Play is the podcast. Download it. SDPB Sports. Uh, Craig Maddock, uh, the podcast in play. Search for it, and you've got it where you get your podcast. Craig, always appreciate you. Thanks a lot. I got it. You see ya. Appreciate it. Craig Maddock tonight, his podcast in play. Uh, great interview podcast on SDPB. Craig Maddock tonight from Sioux Falls. East River meets West River in the books for a Wednesday. Let's get set for the drive at 5.
Let's go to Denver with Doug Ottawill, Mile High Sports senior writer. What's his reaction to this article in USA Today? USA Today wrote a piece. Matt Rule at Nebraska has done this. Deion Sanders at Colorado did this instead. Who's right? We'll talk to Doug next. Live callers, big time interviews, and breaking sports news. This is the Nate Brown Show on Fox Sports Rapid City. The wait is over. Ensemble entry doors exclusively from Renewal by Anderson have arrived with an incredible offer. Secure, timeless style, elegant features, customized countless ways with the legendary quality of Renewal by Anderson. Right now, you get 20% off every Ensemble entry door. No money down, no interest, and no payments for 12 months. No payments for a year. Please scan the QR code on your screen or visit rbarapidcity.com now to book your free estimate. Ensemble entry doors. The wait is over. We are number one, so you can always be their number one. Black Hill Surgical Hospital and Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center, the number one hospital in the nation for major orthopedic surgery. Calling all cornhole players, the American Cornhole Organization is bringing their majors tournament to the Black Hills. Throw some bags at the Box Elder Event Center on April 26th and 27th and compete in the ACO Black Hills Major. Whether you're a seasoned pro or new to the game, this event's perfect for everyone. Join the opening reception April 25th with a cash prize of its own to win. Get registered at thebox.live. From gatherings to games, think inside the box. Here's your Fox Sports Rapid City forecast. Lows dip down to about 28 tonight under mainly cloudy skies. Northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Daytime highs approaching 48 tomorrow. 27 tomorrow night. Temperatures a bit below average Friday and Saturday with highs in the mid 40s. Slight chance for snow becoming mixed precipitation Saturday. That's your forecast on the Black Hills Sports Station, Fox Sports Rapid City. Currently 40. The Horseshoe Restaurant at First Golden Deadwood makes dining out delicious and affordable. Every Wednesday from 11 till 8 p.m., enjoy traditional wings for a buck or boneless wings for 50 cents, served with your pick of 12 different sauces. Thursday, it's two for $20 burger night. Big and fresh burgers with your choice of side. And on Friday and Saturday, enjoy a six-ounce sirloin steak with choice of side and dinner salad for only $12.95. Big flavor at a friendly price at the Horseshoe Restaurant at First Gold Gaming Resort in Deadwood. Live from the Anytime Auto Sales Service and Details Studio, Sales, Service, and Recreation, this is Fox Sports Rapid City. Welcome back in. The Nate Brown Show ready to go in the drive at 5 on a Wednesday. Fox Sports Rapid City in the drive at 5. Brought to you every day by Summit Automotive Group. That's your place to take a look at the pre-owned selection, okay? It starts there. There's a lot of pre-owned vehicles, but you take a look at Summit, then it's car buying built around you. Stacy and Matt and their staff, it's the right financing for you and your family, the right treatment when you're getting there, not the high-pressure sales gimmicky stuff. It's quality. The right situation all the way through. The Summit difference, start online, take a look, and then go to Summit Auto and make a deal with the great staff at Summit Auto. SummitAutoGRP.com, okay? Start there, take a look. Drive at five on the Nate Brown Show with Doug Ottawill, Mile High Sports, Denver. All right, Doug, good to have you back on. How are you? I'm great. I'm uh, getting ready for the Carlos Sports Hall of Fame dinner. Oh, very nice, very nice, okay. Um, I wanna get uh, your read on this article out USA Today. Okay, I, I, maybe you didn't read the whole thing, but this came out USA Today, and it says Matt Rule at Nebraska has visited 108 high schools across several states and 486 off-campus contacts with recruits. Okay, and then it said Deion Sanders has made zero off-campus recruiting trips 
and hasn't visited any recruits away from Boulder. What are they trying to tell us here? <laughs> I don't know what they're trying to tell us. I think it's it's all about what we want to interpret. You know, I mean, I I believe that to be true. I don't I don't think Dion goes anywhere. I don't think he I don't think he you know panders is probably a, a an unfair term, but I don't think he panders to kids that he's recruiting. I think he understands kind of how and where to reach kids, and it's it's not necessarily in their living rooms anymore. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you ever sit down and try to talk to a teenager now, <laughs> there's, there's very few of them that know how to talk. They know how to text, and they know how to DM, um, and I'm not trying to sound like an old guy, but I think that that is, to some degree, I think that's, he's he's just going with the times and I'm not saying it's right or wrong I mean personally I I kind of like the old face to face but um I guess it is what it is you know do you think Dion can um how much how much can he pass Matt Rule on I'm Dion I mean that has to be a factor here oh yeah I mean that's a huge factor I mean you know, I could be the the hardest worker in in all of college sports, and no one knows Doug Ottawa. But if I get a you know a shout out or a text or whatever from from anyone involved in you know quote unquote camp prime, that's going to mean something to me as the 17 year old or a 16 year old. I mean, that's just that's just the reality of of the world we live in. I mean, kids are super fascinated by by fame and by money and i mean the outward appearance of the of the cu bus program you know which is headed by dion and shiloh and shadur is all that and it's impossible to miss so if they want to interact with you in that way i think most kids probably think of it as a feather in their cap rather than a why doesn't he come to visit me Doug Ottawa on tonight. Uh, that was interesting. USA Today put that out there, said, hey, here's two coaches. They're doing it totally different. Matt Rule's all over the place, visiting, visiting, visiting. Uh, Dion's going, no visits, social media uh, discussions, marketing, the, the whole thing. Um, no visits away from Boulder. And I'm going to look at the transfer portal, Doug. That seems like where Dion's going. I mean, it doesn't seem like he's like heavy high school. It seems like he's going transfer portal heavy. And so I look at this. The NCAA just decided here they're not going to fight it anymore because there's too many lawsuits. The Division One Council today said they can go unlimited transfers. So you can go and play right away three, four, five times. What do you think of that in general? I hate it. I mean, you know, I think pro sports aren't as good because of how prominent free agency is. And now you have... Uh, a, lo- a, a level of sports that people loved because of the loyalty, because of, um, you know, the, the theory that guys weren't playing for the almighty buck. And you got to know kids from the time they were freshmen to the time they're seniors. I mean, it's the reason that, that people that used to love college basketball don't love it anymore because the one and dones are so prominent. It, but now, I mean, you literally are rooting for the laundry. I mean, you're going to, if a kid doesn't play at a school, there's 10 coaches that recruited him in high school that he can call, just go down the list. Hey, you still want me? Or, or, or maybe the kid plays really well, plays above his, his, you know, his star rating out of high school, and he says, you know what, instead of going to northern Colorado, I want to go play in the Pac-12. And it's just, I don't know. I mean, I like the idea that a kid can better himself, but it's it's going to be a lawless land that's going to make it really really hard to root for for your team because you 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 want to root for people, but I think that they're just going to be. I mean, I would venture to guess that every school in the country has like a fifty percent or more roster turnover. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I, it's crazy. By the way, what do you say about this? People are getting wound up about this outside of CU and outside of the, the program. Um, Shiloh Sanders on the defensive side, he sent out a social media post. He said, defensive transfers, DM me. 
And then he said down below, <laughs> offensive transfers, DM Shador. So <laughs> Dion's sons are saying, hey, talk to me and, and talk to him. People are going, is this real? I mean, it, it, it goes back to what we are saying. I mean, I, it, it's certainly a way to find kids, certainly a way to communicate with kids. But I think the thing that's more concerning to me is that is the transient nature of the program in general. I mean, it just doesn't strike me as you're building something that's going to last. Um, and not because you're going after transfers or, um, you know, portal kids. It's, it's more because I think if Dion doesn't go places and his sons are the ones reaching out to people, um, and not only that, but what, what are, what are you doing? You're, I, are you a recruiter or are you a player? Are, are you supposed to be in class or are you, you know, I mean, it's class and, and I'm not, not, I'm not naive enough to think that. <laughs> school is any part of this anymore <laughs> but it's just it doesn't strike me as and i don't know that colorado is going to be alone in this but like it just doesn't strike me as anything that the the, the program is going to be able to sustain and you know there's all the speculation of dion's gone after his kids are gone which stuff like that almost makes it seem like yeah mm. that's probably right mm. I thought that was interesting. I'm like, I'm not going to hit them on it, but you got two players that seem like they're different than other players on the team, and I, and I guess they are. But Shiloh said, DM me for defense. Um, Shadur, DM him for offense. That uh, was interesting. Uh, Doug Ottawa on tonight, milehighsports.com. I got to ask you about the series, man. It's Nuggets, Lakers. Nuggets, Lakers. Do you like this matchup for the Nuggets? Um, I mean, as a fan, I love it because you jump right out of the gates with easily the most compelling series in the playoffs already. Um, I think that the the nature of the rivalry in the last you know two years has been pretty compelling because for the first time in their the two respective franchises' history, the Nuggets have just owned the Lakers. I mean, they swept them and they swept them in the season. Um, and I think there's there's enough chatter out there that a guy like LeBron James is going to take that pretty personally. Um, I don't think it's an easy I don't think it's an easy draw for the Nuggets at all. I know the um, I believe the series price was plus three fifty or something like that. So I think most people think the Nuggets are going to win, and I do too. But I don't think that it's going to be the sweep that that everybody remembers and and not only that but you know if you think back to that series last year yeah it was 4-0 series score but i mean every game was a nail biter and there there was no there was no such thing as oh we we just dominated ran through the lakers i mean it looks like that on paper but especially from a lifelong Nuggets fan i mean you just never feel safe against the lakers and i think there's a you throw in the elements of you know the lakers have uh, the the most foul shots by any team. I, I mean, it's by a mile. Uh, you, you throw in the conspiracy theories, which I know you know I am. Uh, you know the the NBA would would probably love to see LeBron James advance because love him or hate him, he's a story. This is probably getting real near his swan song. Um, and I just I don't. <laughs> It sounds bad, but I don't see this as a series that anyone in the NBA wants to see go four games. I mean, this strikes me as a ratings bonanza if it goes seven games. Um, and that's, you know, that's the conspiracy side of me. But I, I, I do think the Nuggets will win. They're, I don't think they're going to sweep them. Um, they're the better team, and that's been proven out pretty, pretty indisputably in the last two years. But, uh, you know, it, it's it's LeBron James. It's the Lakers brand. There's this sort of anything can happen fear, you know. Doug Ottawa's going Saturday night, and I, I got Doug a little bit. I sense a little worry. I, I, I sense a little worry. Not much, but a little worry. Uh, Nuggets, Lakers, game one Saturday night in Denver. Doug Ottawa on tonight. Uh, follow his coverage, milehighsports.com, where you want to go. Doug, always good, man. Thanks for the time. You bet. I'll talk to you soon, Nate. Appreciate it. Doug Ottawa from Denver, milehighsports.com, here on the Nate Brown Show. 
Um, good stuff. Mile High Sports senior writer. All right. Drive at five on a Wednesday needs to get even more interesting, doesn't it? Let's let's get more interesting today. Okay. When it comes to South Dakota high school sports, we have to do something like we used to do it. Okay? We, we just have to. We, we change this. Change is good. But, but we are missing the boat here. We're making mistakes here. And this high school uh, sport is big. And I think we're doing it wrong. We need to go back to how we did it. I'll explain next. You're listening to The Nate Brown Show. Follow us and watch the show live on Twitter at Nate Brown Show. Saturday, April 20th, Park Bench Apparel invites you to the first ever Park Bench Apparel Party at the Central States Fairgrounds Gen Pro Nerdy Nuts Building, where they'll have live music from flannel, adult beverages, door prizes, and more. Bring your friends, kick off spring with a great event. It's the first Park Bench Apparel Party, Saturday, April 20th, starting at 8 p.m. Tickets just $10 for the Park Bench Apparel Party. Looking for a career? Look no further. Pete Lean & Sons has immediate openings for ready mix concrete delivery drivers. No CDL? No problem. We offer paid training, competitive hourly rates, and full-time hours. Plus, Pete Lean & Sons offers excellent benefits, including a low deductible health insurance plan and a 401k with a generous company match. At Pete Lean & Sons, team members can also grow and develop their trade while supporting local communities. These are all reasons why employees hired at Pete Lean & Sons want to retire at Pete Lean & Sons. Apply now at PeteLean.com. KIMM Rapid City and K294BD Rapid City. The Black Hills Sports Station, 106.7 FM and 1150 AM. Fox Sports Rapid City. Here's great news for Toyota shoppers. New Toyotas are arriving almost daily at Denny Menno Toyota. Shop our best selection in years with over 60 new Toyotas here and arriving daily, including nearly 20 new 2024 Tundras with great lease payments. See your new Toyota on our lot, on our website, or reserve one that's on the way. Toyota factory cash incentives and low financing are available on gas and hybrid models. Find your new Toyota right here in Rapid City at Denny Menno Toyota or DennyMennoToyota.com. Nearly 150 years ago, Americans didn't race across the plains to settle. They pioneered. They toiled and ground the land into the world we know today, creating opportunities not just for themselves, but for future generations. Don't settle. Pioneer. Pioneer Bank and Trust. Local. Member FDIC. Whether you run the race, make the catch, cast a line, pitch a tent, or just look good doing it, Shields Rapid City has your gear. From athletic clothing from your favorite team, cold weather gear to keep you warm, to the best camping selection this side of the Black Hills, and the most stylish and functional women's outerwear and footwear, Shields has the widest selection of the best brands in the business. So when you're ready to get out, get in the game, or get going, get to Shields. Shields, we're right there with you at Rushmore Crossing in Rapid City. Hey, it's Chris Broussard. Remember to catch the Odd Couple weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. right here on Fox Sports Rapid City. And now, let's get back to Rapid City Sports Talk Show, The Nate Brown Show. Welcome back into your sports, your show, the Nate Brown Show Live weekdays 4 to 6. If you miss any parts of the show, maybe you can't catch the first hour. You're just getting off work. You're in the drive at 5. Go to the Nate Brown Show podcast. It's worth the time there. We don't repeat guests, playback segments like repeat stuff all day and stick on one topic, but try and hit new stuff each time out. So if you miss some of the guests, some of the segments, go to the Nate Brown Show podcast. You can hear Hey, I want to listen about NFL, that college transfer portal, about high school, whatever it is. Across the board, we try and go local, regional, national, each show. Go to the Nate Brown Show podcast. Every show is there. So search for it, the Nate Brown Show podcast on Amazon, Apple, Spotify. We're out there. Search the Nate Brown Show, and you've got the podcast. Kyle Courtney's coming up. He's the Rapid City Christian Activities Director. Appreciate his time today. It's a big day for 
high school sports news. There's a discussion happening on sanctioning high school baseball. That process is getting started to see, will this work in South Dakota? That That's where we're at. It's a long process. American Legion's going to be involved. Do, do they want to see it? Do, does it work? So that process is starting. There's a lot of discussion. High school name, image, and likeness. Will this get approved in South Dakota? It's going to a vote of the schools. The schools are going to vote. Should high school student athletes be able to do some name, image, and likeness? Restrictive. I mean, it's not like just running rampant like the NCAA let it go. So Kyle Courtney coming up. I'll get his thoughts on that more. Rapid City Christian Activities Director and boys basketball coach. He's coming up. Um, speaking of high school sports, I got to discuss this now and um, just kind of lay this out there because I know it's not easy. Okay. So this process is not easy. It's difficult. There's people that are going to complain. You can't make everybody happy in life. That's the way it is. I, I understand it. Leadership requires hard decisions. You're just going to tick some people off and you got to do the right thing. So it's, it's, so it's not easy. But I've been looking at this the last couple of years, not just from a selfish standpoint. I, I don't really have a dog in the hunt here. I'm trying to look in the big picture for our schools, West River, the budgets for the schools, the experience for the student athletes, the experience for the fans, the, the coaches. There's a lot of people here that I think are impacted, and I think we could do this better than we are. And so I'm talking about high school football scheduling. The reason I'm going to bring it up again tonight is the high school football schedules for this next season just got released. And so I'm looking at it and, okay, who's who's going to play who? Nope, nobody really cares that much, right? It's like, oh, uh, St. Thomas More has to play Chamberlain this year. And, and this is like, that that's fine. Nobody's going to go crazy over every week. Oh, this is like the NFL schedule release. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. What I am looking for is this. Are we scheduling high school football games that make sense? Are we scheduling some rivalry games? Are we scheduling games of area um, teams to save on some budgets that, that makes sense for the fans to be able to watch and, and have a great atmosphere and, and that whole thing? Are we doing that? And it looks like um, the state, as they schedule these games, and I said it's tough. They're, they're not just scheduling games for Central and Stevens and um, Rapid City Christian and whatever. It's the entire state. And I, I wouldn't want to do this job. And I think it's very difficult because it goes to one um, office at the Activities Association and they put the schedule together and they try and, does this work? Does that work? Is, are we honoring the conference play? Are we doing this? Are we doing that? I mean, it's just a nightmare. And then you end up with uh, high school football games to me and I'm going, what are we doing here? And let me point this out. What? The state of South Dakota, the Activities Association, schedules football now. They've done this for a while now because back in the day, the ADs used to do it with their coaches, and there was some controversy because some schools had a hard time getting games. Well, we, we can't get this game, or we can't fill out a schedule, and there was some controversy. So the schools decided, Let, let's have the state do it. And there hasn't been that big of a concern, but every now and then you start looking, when we added a class, when we added that double A class, which is mainly just the ESD schools, it created some headaches because they got to play each other. That takes some games away from other schools and area rivalries. I mean, it just created some headaches. It really did. And so let me, let me point out a few concerns I have with some of our schools here. This is high school football scheduling. In St. Thomas More, Rapid City Christian, here's one for example. St. Thomas More and Rapid City Christian developing kind of a nice rivalry. Football, basketball, girls basketball, okay, volleyball. They're playing each other in all of it. St. Thomas More and Rapid City Christian are not playing each other, not scheduled to play each other in football. <laughs> it's like, uh, huh? And I mean, that, that's an easy one. How can we sit here? We got St. Thomas More, Rapid City Christian developing a nice little rivalry, 
and they don't get scheduled to play each other in football. You got Rapid City Christian's going to go play Canton, Sioux Falls Christian, Dell Rapids, Chamberlain, and, and then some area schools, Bell, Foos, Custer, and you're not going to throw in St. Thomas Moore? I mean, that one to me, I just like, we, we, we got to be able to have some autonomy here for the ADs and the local schools to schedule some of these games, some of these crossover, for example, we got to be able to have that. Stevens and Central, to me, have to be able to play Spearfish and Sturgis. They just have to be able to play them, and they're not. They get to play one or the other. Stevens is going to play Sturgis. Central is going to play Spearfish, but they don't let them. No, we can't play both because you got to have AAA teams in there, so we want you guys to go back to Sioux Falls four times a year. Central and Stevens football last year traveled 3,000 miles. I mean, think about that. Not just from a travel standpoint, a busing standpoint, a budget standpoint. I mean, it is an absolute grinder. And so we got to give some flexibility. Um, maybe the state can control the nine-man schedules and all the nine-man teams and maybe 11B and 11A. Maybe they can do that. Can we have some autonomy for the bigger schools to be able to say, this game makes sense, that matchup makes sense, so we don't have Central and Stevens having to go back four times to Sioux Falls? For example, Central Stevens in this schedule right now are trying to find a way, how can we put a Rushmore Bowl together? The Rushmore Bowl is the number one fundraiser for Stevens and Central activities. Not just football, activities. It's the number one fundraiser. And they're trying to look at this schedule because it was um, spelled out. How do we put a Rushmore Bowl together? Do, do we have, how, how can we do this? This is the type of stuff which I, which I say, I think we got to have a, a mix of both. We got to have some local school flexibility and control to put together fundraiser games, to put together rivalry games, STM and Rapid City Christian. We got to play that game. Not, well, you're not going to do that one. Well, good luck. We're, we got you scheduled to go here, here, here. Well, we need to play this game. We need to have a Rushmore Bowl. We should be able to have Stephen Central, Spearfish Sturges, Rushmore Bowl every year. I mean, we should be able to have that every year. That's my only plea. I, I just say, can we have a little bit of flexibility, some local control? The state's going to have to be involved, but I think we could help each other. Kyle Courtney's in next. Rapid City Christian AD. His thoughts on it on the way. You're listening to The Nate Brown Show. The wait is over. Ensemble entry doors exclusively from Renewal by Anderson have arrived with an incredible offer. Secure, timeless style, elegant features, customized countless ways with the legendary quality of Renewal by Anderson. Right now, you get 20% off every Ensemble entry door. No money down, no interest, and no payments for 12 months. No payments for a year. Please scan the QR code on your screen or visit rbarapidcity.com now to book your free estimate. Ensemble entry doors. The wait is over. We are number one, so you can always be their number one. Black Hills Surgical Hospital and Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center, the number one hospital in the nation for major orthopedic surgery. For just about anything. Hi, this is Kelly Rang. It's motorcycle season, which means now is the time to trade in your boat, RV, car, truck, snowmobile, lawnmower, tractor, or anything with a title towards your next Harley Davidson motorcycle. Take it to the highway with little to nothing down and rates as low as 1.99%. Have less than perfect credit? Our credit experts can get you the best rate available. With prices on pre owned starting as low as $59.95, today is the day to check out all the great things you can find at Black Hills Harley Davidson in Rapid City or check us out online at blackhillshd.com. Ever since Barron's Wilson Funeral Home first opened their doors in Rapid City 140 years ago, they have continued to make personal service their number one priority. In your time of grief, they offer a personal touch by being at your side through every step of the funeral process. They answer difficult questions and guide you toward other professional services you may need. See for yourself the wide variety of services they can provide for you by visiting their website at barronswilson.com. 
Hi, it's Nate Brown for Black Hills Community Bank. If you run your own company or you're looking to start a small business here in the Black Hills, you want to make sure you choose the right banking partner. And I know the right choice for business is Black Hills Community Bank. They have plenty of banking options to suit your specific needs. And Black Hills Community Bank is here to help business owners thrive and to make sure you have the support and tools to help your business grow. Just contact one of their business loan experts today or visit bhcbank.com. Member FDIC. Live from the Anytime Auto Sales Service and Details Studio, Sales, Service, and Recreation, this is Fox Sports Rapid City. Welcome back in. The Nate Brown Show is live on Fox Sports Rapid City. Appreciate you checking in with us, spending some time, however you do that on the radio side, 106.7 FM, 1150 AM. Thanks for tuning in there. Also, stream us all the time, foxsportsrapidcity.com on your phone. Stream us right there. One click away, you can listen live. Dan Patrick gets you started in the morning. Colin Cowherd, the herd, Doug Gottlieb, and, of course, South Dakota Sports Talk Show weekdays, 4 to 6. Also, you can watch us live right now. Welcome everybody in on Twitter, watching the live stream in studio at Nate Brown Show. Kyle Courtney's on tonight. Appreciate his time. Rapid City Christian Activities Director, Head Boys Basketball Coach. Kyle, good to have you back on. How are you? Nate, I'm doing well. Appreciate you having me on. I appreciate your time. I know it's busy, and I say, hey, Coach, i got to talk to you about some stuff here. There's some South Dakota sports news that, that comes out, and I want to get your reaction on this. You give me a good perspective as a coach and an, and an AD. One, I'm going to go to the football side. So you're not the coach there, but, but you're the uh, AD, and – the football side's interesting for Rapid City Christian. You're 11A now, so so growth and, and success, and you're now 11A. I look at the schedule that came out this week. Got some interesting games. Canton, Sioux Falls Christian, Dell Rapids, some of these games. The one that jumps out, I go, no St. Thomas Moore. And so so the state um, is in charge of the scheduling. I just said, that's a, that's a hard job. It's not easy. But you want to see St. Thomas Moore on your schedule or no? Well, you're right. It, it is a hard job, but I, I know um, Craig Nowatney, the athletic director at St. Thomas More, and myself, both, we both would have loved to see that game on the schedule. I mean, we've just played it just a couple years now, and um, it's been a great football game. We'll love to see that continue, um, but obviously they didn't, they didn't give us the game. So, How would you like to see that moving forward, Coach? Is there any way to have a, I don't know, a compromise? Because I know the history on it. Coach, we, the state – used to not control the schedules the school did like like you guys do for basketball you, you have the you contact the other ad's and the coaches you say hey let, let's do a home and home or, or whatever um we used to do that for football and then the school said some schools said we, we can't get games and nobody we can't fill this week or that week so they said state you take it over do you think there's an appetite for schools to have some flexibility again on football or not you know, that's a good question. You know, I've been here 10 years in South Dakota, and, and it's it's been going on as long as I've been here as far as the state controlling the schedule. So I don't know the entire background on it. Um, I think as an athlete, yes, yeah, an AD myself, I would, I would love to be able to control our football schedule. I think there's a lot of bonuses to that. I also understand the position the state's in and some of the history that they've had of people not wanting to play each other and and all those battles so i think it's a tough situation but yes i would love some flexibility on my end to be able to to make uh, the schedule myself yeah we'll see where that goes um the state's controlling it uh right now and and it's tough because you're trying to fill out games and they think this is a the fair way to do it and a lot of schools like it this way some maybe don't uh kyle courtney on tonight let's go to um this out of the board of directors meeting so a lot of people are going to look at this and say, oh, man, this is scary. I, I don't know if this is good, but the board of directors, they approved a second reading of a high school name, image, and likeness policy. Before there really wasn't much there, the Activities Association said, hey, we got to have a policy of student athletes can't do this, this, and this, but you can do this and this. When it comes to the schools now, schools are going to vote on this, Coach. So you got to get 60% to say yes. Is name, image, and likeness like a touchy subject? 
Well, I, I don't know that we've talked a lot about it at the high school level, but it's something we need to get out ahead of. Um, you know, from my understanding of the amendment that's coming down is it's really trying to put some, some guardrails in place um, and trying to get out ahead of it because it is going to be something that's coming down the line to high schools. Um, obviously, it's become, you know, it's just exploded at college, as you know. Um, but you do have a lot of kids and students that are starting to, you know, make money off of social media. And I really think that's probably where high school association is trying to put some guardrails in and to just make sure that they're not using their status as a high school athlete to really monetize and make money off of it. So I do think it's good to try to get out ahead of, um, but you know, there's, there's a lot of potential stuff down the road. That's kind of scary to think about as a high school athletic director. (laughs) I bet. I think about this. How about some of the small towns? Like you're rapid city Christian. You're in a, you're in a big market smaller school how about some of the small towns to me i'm going to guess i talked to some of these ad's i think they're going to say name him said likeness here give me a break so i, I don't i i wonder if this is going to get to 60 percent yeah you're probably right i i don't know that it will um but i do think it's i do think it's a good conversation to start having because the and i think the biggest thing is the social media part right and so even even athletes in those small towns are they're on social media, and I think that's what this is aimed at, is trying to get out ahead of the social media stuff that, that kids are doing. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Courtney on Rapid City Christian AD, head boys basketball coach. i got to ask you on this basketball stuff. Um, Sodak 16, you guys were right in the middle of it. You guys had to go out to pier. You won. You made the State A Boys Basketball Tournament. Everything's good. They, they did have a vote. At the AD's meeting, should we have Sodak 16 games at the higher seed that did not get approved, going to stay neutral courts, which way did you want to go? Man, I was all for going to the higher seed. Um, you know, and I've, I've said previously on your show that I'm, I'm a big proponent of that. Um, I would have loved to see that pass. I think there was more interest in it, um, but the vote still, you know, still came back at the class a and b level that the majority of ad's didn't want it um i think there's some and here's a couple reasons that i heard at the athletic directors conference why people still didn't want it was they were afraid that people are going to start to skew their schedules or change their schedules in order to really get that higher seed and get that home court advantage Um, i've also heard that you know there's just um the advantage of hosting um, there's just not you're not going to make a lot of money as a host school off of it. So even though you're going to make a gate, you know what you're seeing as the host school, a lot of it's going back to the high school association. So they just didn't feel there was much of an incentive to host. Um, but on my end, I mean, I would love to see it go to the high seat. I think it's time to do that. Obviously, the vote didn't go that way. Would you um, change your schedule that much? I mean, I I double A has done it this way. I mean, I don't see double A schools going well. We're going to not play this team, this team, this team, because we want to make sure we try and, oh, I don't know, get some easy enough games and make the right call just to have a six seed so we can host. I, I don't see that. Does it get that deep? Personally, I don't think it does, but I know there's some people that are afraid of that. Um, but, no, I, I think your point's a valid one. I, I don't think you're going to go out and just totally play that whole game to that extent. I really don't think – Teams are going to do that because you got to play your conference schedule, and and it's going to be hard to change your schedule that drastically to skew that. And plus, you don't know from any given year what you know teams are going to be up and down, and it's hard to plan accordingly. But there's some people that are afraid of that. Okay, so the neutral sites are going to stay uh, for Sodak 16. They were thinking about going high seed. Do you think um, some teams thought, or some coaches think it's a unfair advantage too much of an advantage for a rapid city christian for example to host to go to state did you hear that well yeah i mean there's there's people that are going to say that's too far of a drive you know on a tuesday to drive all the way out to rapid city or to have to go to the other end of the state i mean you know that we do that in other sports so i don't think that's a valid argument but um you know we have a joke as here uh, west river i guess i probably shouldn't say it but i will but you know, it's twice as long to travel West River as yeah. it is for us to go east. But, um, 
That's a running joke that we have out here, West River. Yeah, and I've never heard that one. No, I'm kidding. I've never heard that. Uh, okay, Kyle, let me ask you on this front. You guys don't have a, a heavy um, look at this yet, but I, I'm wondering if this is in your future. High school baseball has been talked about. Um, they discussed it today. Should it be sanctioned? The process of taking a look at that in South Dakota is going to start. Will Rapid City Christian ever get in the mix on that? Well, we, you know, we've had a, uh, a club team here for the last couple of years. We, we have a lot of kids out. We have 44 kids out for our, our club baseball team this spring. Okay. So it's been a big thing for us. I'll tell you, I, I'm, not a, I'm not really big about sanctioning baseball. Um, I grew up in Iowa. We grew, we grew up having high school baseball for forever, played high school baseball, loved it. We played in the summers. Um, but I just don't think it's going to work out here in South Dakota um, as much. I think what we have going on with the high school baseball at the club level is a really solid thing. I would love to see it stay that way. Um, I just think they've got a really good thing going on with that high school baseball as it is now. Um, but I, I think when if it becomes sanctioned, then obviously there's a lot more policies and hoops and things you got to jump through for those baseball guys. And I think it's tough out here with the legions. I really do. So I know there's a camp that would like to have this high school baseball season that's sanctioned be in the summer. I just don't think that's going to work in South Dakota at all. Okay. Because of the legions. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you on, I don't think summer would work. I wonder if you could turn this club baseball thing into a sanctioned high school baseball thing. Does that, you're an AD, you're in charge of a budget. Is that a concern? That's, that's another sport in your budget. Yeah, I mean, we, frankly, for us, we treat it like one of our high school sports already. So for us, it's not going to be a big concern as far as budget-wise because we already treat our club baseball just like another sport. Um, but for some schools, it would be. I'm sure that would be the case. Mm. Kyle Courtney on tonight. Great stuff. Uh, Rapid City Christian AD, high school boys basketball coach. Kyle, always good and appreciate your perspective. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Nate. Have a good night. Thanks for coming on. Kyle Courtney on tonight. Wanted to get his read on it. AD at Rapid City Christian, head boys basketball coach for the Comets. Um, good stuff there uh, across the board on South Dakota High School Sports News today. Kind of popping on a, on a few fronts. All right. We'll continue uh, some discussions on, on a lot of this from football to, to basketball to baseball, NIL. We ran through it all. If you missed some of the stuff, Go to the Nate Brown Show podcast. Kyle Courtney was on just just now. Craig Maddock, his read on it from Sioux Falls, uh, SDPB broadcaster. So got you covered on this one. We'll, we'll stay on it. Big board meeting, annual meeting was held today in Pier for the Activities Association. We come right back and we go inside sports medicine on a Wednesday. One of the all-time great Rapid City athletes, Zach Finley, now orthopedic surgeon at Black Hills Ortho, and he's on next. This is the Nate Brown Show. Save big money on your next project. Now at Menards. Update your home with low-maintenance vinyl windows from Jeldwin. They're durable, energy efficient, and are low-maintenance. Menards carries over 100 different size and style options in stock. Ready to take home today. Say big on Jeldwin windows now at Menards. And don't forget to check out our flyer on Menards.com for all the great deals happening now. Save big money at Menards. Ready to be part of something big? Meet the Rapid City Sports Commission, the powerhouse behind sports in Rapid City. The commission focuses on bringing regional and national tournaments, supporting homegrown events, and creating opportunities for our kids. But it's not just games, it's a win-win for all of us. Youth sports fuel our economy. Hosting events in Rapid City means out-of-town families shop, dine, and stay with us, which boosts sales tax revenues, too. To get in on the action, visit rcsportscommission.com, where we're all about the hustle. This isn't just the sound of a legendary Brunswick pool table. It's the sound of families about to make memories together. And while this may sound like the hum of a spa, <laughs> listen closely and you'll hear backyard fun for years to come so while splash city's guarantee of quality sure sounds good we know quality time sounds even better Who wants another burger splash city 1024 west omaha across from connects in rapid city 
Looking for a career? Look no further. B. Lean and Sons has immediate openings for ready mix concrete delivery drivers. No CDL? No problem. We offer paid training, competitive hourly rates, and full time hours. Plus, B. Lean and Sons offers excellent benefits, including a low deductible health insurance plan and a 401k with a generous company match. At B. Lean and Sons, team members can also grow and develop their trade while supporting local communities. These are all reasons why employees hired at Pete Lean and Sons want to retire at Pete Lean and Sons. Apply now at PeteLean.com. I'm with Brian at Anytime Auto Sales. Getting your car in tip-top shape for the summer months has arrived. Yes, it has. And we're here for all your summertime automotive needs. We'll make sure your AC system is fully charged and functioning at full capacity. Plus, we have the best brake deal around at just $329 per axle for most vehicles, including pads, rotors, labor, and a lifetime warranty as long as you own the rig. That brake deal is flat out the best deal around. You know, it really is. And we have great prices for oil changes as well. Get a mobile synthetic blend 5-quart oil change for most vehicles for only $30. $4.99 plus tax. You do a lot of things at some great prices to keep anyone's rig running right. You know, we do. Rebates for brand name tire deals plus detailing specials too. Whatever your repairs may be, we'll do them right and at a fair price. Anytime auto sales service and detail folks, the place to trust. Your complete AAA and ASE certified automotive repair specialist. See anytimeanytime.com and of course on the corner of Highway 79 and East Minnesota Rapid City. Anytime auto sales. From the kennel to the coop, whatever the season, Fleet Farm has everything to keep your animals happy and healthy. From training your pup to sit season, to mastering those retrieval skills season. From clipping your horse for competition season, to keeping the backyard birds well-fed season. And of course, loving your pets like family season. There's a reason people say, if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, you don't need it. Because we have it all. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Hey, this is Rob Parker from The Odd Couple. Don't miss our show weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. right here on Fox Sports Rapid City. And now we'll send you back to Rapid City Sports Talk Show, The Nate Brown Show. Welcome back in the Nate Brown Show Live, Fox Sports Rapid City, 106.7 FM, 1150 AM, and stream us there, foxsportsrapidcity.com. Let's go inside sports medicine. Brought to you by our partners, Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center, the expert team when it comes to orthopedic care in the Black Hills since 1976. Better access, more options at Black Hills Ortho. Also with urgent care, start online at bhosc.com. Continue your active lifestyle with the expert team at Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center. Helping you stay in the game. BHOSC.com. Well, we've had him on in the past. Let's do it again. Orthopedic surgeon at Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center is Dr. Zach Finley on Inside Sports Medicine. Zach, good to have you back on. How are you? Uh, great to be here, Nate. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I wanted to discuss this. It's baseball season. So I wanted to get your read on some of this stuff, um, you know, throwing, overuse, injuries, uh, how it all factors in. So I'm looking at Major League Baseball right now. Let's, let's start there. There's a ton of injuries, a ton. And and people are looking at Zach. They're saying, is this a, is it just that time of year? Is it just a coincidence this year? A lot of starting pitchers just, just out, elbow injuries and the whole thing. So when you look at it from from your side of things, I know you're looking at, okay, I need data. You know, is the injuries, are they the same? Are they different? What gets your attention when you see a whole host of starting pitchers going out with elbow injuries? Yeah, it is surprising. You know, I think, um, you know, when we see these pitching injuries, they tend to be uh, a couple different things, you know, and it, it's, it's the same things happening over and over again. Most of these are elbow type injuries. Uh, there's a particular ligament called the ulnar collateral ligament. It's on the inside of the elbow. And it's an injury that is very common in pitchers and overhead athletes especially. But um, unfortunately, the way our bodies are designed, they're not really structured to uh, undergo that amount of force over that amount of time. So a lot of times these big league pitchers over the course of their career, you know, they've been pitching for decades a lot of the time by the by the time they get to the big leagues um, just have a ligament that's been worn out and um, you know you have to be very careful about trying to preserve that 
and you know, sticking to pitch counts and and other things to help help maintain a, a long career. And especially for those guys, if they've been playing baseball for that long, unfortunately, a lot of them um, end up with that injury. So. Yeah. Dr. Zach Finley on tonight, orthopedic surgeon at Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center talking uh, these pitching injuries. It's interesting. It jumps out to me. So one thing that people are saying, Zach, is it's the velocity, the speed. Um, it's ramped up. Guys are throwing 98 to 100. In years past, it wasn't quite there. It's it's the, um, the torque, the force. How much do you think that factors in? You talked about the wear and tear as well. What about just that? that um, over, I guess, uh, you got to throw as hard as you can. Yeah, I, I think that has a big thing to do with it. You know, I think as, as we, we know more, you know, we have more advanced metrics, we have better coaching and, um, you know, better, better training programs for pitchers. We can, we can adjust things to get that velocity up there. Uh, but, you know, the way, the way the ligament is structured or the way our anatomy is structured, doesn't really change right so you know when you have all those other things um, increasing and and us staying the same uh, a lot of times it's a little too much you know and and a lot of these guys they can thread the needle and be okay uh, but if, if, if something's off or if they have you know too much stress over a, a period of time you know they can result in an injury which is what we're seeing let's talk about locally here you got little leaguers you got high school players legion players how important is the pitch count factor, do you believe, when it comes to arms and protecting arms? Uh, pitch counts are very important. You know, we, we see it um, all the way down to the lowest levels um, in Little League um, as they get up through high school. You know, especially younger younger kids that are pitching, you know, their bones are not fully uh, skeletally mature, so they have open growth plates. Uh, those type of injuries, they can have elbow injuries, they can have shoulder injuries in particular uh, from, from doing too much throwing. Um, so it's, it is very important that you stick to pitch counts. Um, there, there are different guidelines for different ages that we adhere, adhere to. Um, and, you know, as you get older, you can increase those pitch counts, but especially in the younger years when, uh, when mechanics are so important. Um, it's really important to adhere to those to prevent injury. Dr. Zach Finley joining us inside sports medicine. Always a good perspective. Orthopedic surgeon out at Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center. Zach, always good to talk to you. Thanks for coming on. Are oh, you bet, Nate. Great to talk to you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate your time. Dr. Zach Finley, part of the expert team when it comes to Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center, orthopedic surgeon here in Rapid City. Start online at bhosc.com. When it comes to bone, joint, and muscle care, that's the region's preferred provider. Black Hills Orthopedic and Spine Center, inside sports medicine on a Wednesday. All right, let's go who's hot and who's not wrapping up the show tonight. Here's news out from the Pac-12. How do you think the Pac-12 schools did when it comes to athlete rev um, athletic revenue? What do you think? Pac-12 schools, athletic revenue. We'll break it down next. Did you miss an interview or great segment on the Nate Brown Show? Just find the Nate Brown Show podcast and listen wherever you download your podcasts. Saturday, April 20th, Park Bench Apparel invites you to the first ever Park Bench Apparel Party at the Central States Fairgrounds 10 Pro Nerdy Nuts Building, where they'll have live music from flannel, adult beverages, door prizes, and more. Bring your friends, kick off spring with a great event. It's the first Park Bench Apparel Party, Saturday, April 20th, starting at 8 p.m. Tickets just $10 for the Park Bench Apparel Party. Attention, please. The new loaded cheesy ranch sticks at Pizza Ranch are loaded with flavor. Skillet crust, melty cheese, herbs, spices, and now up to two of your favorite toppings like pepperoni, sausage, jalapenos, and bacon. You've really got to get a load of these. Like, literally, get a whole load of them. Pizza Ranch, everyone's favorite buffet. Stop into your local Pizza Ranch with two Rapid City locations. Their buffet open daily, 11 to 8, and order online at PizzaRanch.com. 
I am here with Weston and Denise Chapman from Black Hills Tire. We're the neighborhood chef for the whole town because we will pick up and deliver anywhere in town. We will do whatever we can to help anybody. It's important to us that somebody can say like, hey, my mom needs something. They need this and I know you'll take care of them. I think that means more to us than anything is when somebody will say like, I need somebody in my family taken care of and I know you guys will take care of them. And that's just because that's community to us. We all help each other out. We can create this community together. Check us out at blackhillstire.com. Here's your Fox Sports Rapid City forecast. Lows dip down to about 28 tonight under mainly cloudy skies. Northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Daytime highs approaching 48 tomorrow. 27 tomorrow night. Temperatures a bit below average Friday and Saturday with highs in the mid 40s. Slight chance for snow becoming mixed precipitation Saturday. That's your forecast on the Black Hills Sports Station, Fox Sports Rapid City. Currently, it's 39 degrees. Join Fox Sports Rapid City this weekend as we kick off another season of Post 22 Hard Hats Baseball. The Post 22 Hard Hats get set for their home opener as they host Sheridan, Wyoming in a three-game series Saturday and Sunday at Fitzgerald Stadium in Rapid City. Join Dean Gurr and me, Jerome Wickersham, for the pregame show Saturday at 4.50, followed by the first pitch at 5. Coverage continues Sunday afternoon at 1. Post 22 Battle Sheridan in Legion Baseball this weekend right here on Fox Sports Rapid City. Live from the Anytime Auto Sales Service and Details Studio, Sales, Service, and Recreation, this is Fox Sports Rapid City. All right, on a Wednesday night, it is Who's Hot and Who's Not. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking in and staying this late into Who's Hot and Who's Not. Best part of the show, some stories you maybe haven't heard. You need to. It's brought to you by the Pizza Ranch. PizzaRanch.com, carry out or delivery. I did it this uh, past weekend, man. It's outstanding. Pizza Ranch, two locations in Rapid City. Rapid City Pizza Ranch South with the Fun Zone Arcade. Come for the best buffet in town. Bring the kids for the Fun Zone Arcade. It's a blast. Rapid City Pizza Ranch. Who's hot and who's not on the Nate Brown Show? Here we go. In my who's hot category. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it. Sioux Falls has another sports venue this isn't like um you know the the premier center to the monument it's a sports venue they have a field house out there at sanford they have the turf complex outside they have the pentagon basketball volleyball they, they have that now they have a new one on the west side it's going to be called impact sports center Forty thousand square foot building three high school sized gyms Smaller courts for middle school or, or younger kids. Full-size volleyball. 15 pickleball courts. Um, 10,000 square feet of open field turf. And 4,000 square feet of batting cages. So, you, you look at it, you go, Rapid City, we, 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 we have some things cooking. We need more things. We, we got to get th some things cooking. This is a privately owned thing here. Um, Impact Sports Center. Basketball, volleyball, pickleball, uh, open field turf, that type is kind of a multi-sport venue, 40,000 square feet. Impact Sports Center, uh, just opening in Sioux Falls. In our Pizza Ranch, who's not category tonight? Let's go to the Pac-12. The numbers are out. How much athletic revenue did the departments make in the Pac-12? Is this the final year of the Pac-12, right? Athletic departments at the Pac-12 public universities experienced an 81 million shortfall. 81 million combined for the athletic departments at the public universities in the Pac-12. 81 million shortfall. Only five schools in the Pac-12 reported an operating surplus. Where, hey, we're, we're in good shape. Not great. Not great, Randy. Um, Five schools with a surplus. Uh, the other schools, an $81 million shortfall in the Pac-12. All right, the Nate Brown Show in the books on this Wednesday. Great show tonight. A lot of high school sports news. Great guests. Go to the Nate Brown Show podcast. It is going up right now, and the Odd Couple is on. See you back here tomorrow at 4. One guy's married. One guy is divorced.